Hi guys, it's Kelly Latavola here and I am back with another video for W Plus 9. Today we're going to be making kind of a classically elegant Christmas card. Um, we're just going to bump it up a little bit so that the, the flowers are the star of the show. So I'm using the Christmas Rose Bouquet and the Christmas Greetings set. Um, I'm going to be actually stamping this twice. So the first time that I'm stamping it, I'm stamping it in intense black ink from Simon's to Stamp because I'm going to be doing some Copic coloring. This is almost kind of like a highlighting technique where you're really just um, popping up or coloring one portion. There's a, a bunch of different ways to highlight a part of your card that you really want to show. For me, I'm going to be doing it with some coloring today. So I picked out my favorite red combination for the poinsettia that's in the center, center of this um, Christmas bouquet. I'm just going to color it a little bit different. So usually when I um, color poinsettias, I do some shading at the, well, really any large bloom flowers. I said poinsettias, but so anyway, what I usually do is I add, start adding shading. I don't fill the whole thing in. I start adding shading at the base of the petal and the tip of the petal, and then I color lightest to darkest, darkest to lightest. I'm still going to do lightest to darkest, darkest to lightest, but this time I filled in the whole flower with my lightest color so that there is not going to be any white highlight. And then I'm going to go in and start adding shading from just the base of the petal. This um, adding that shading behind each petal or at the base of each petal is really going to help your flower look multidimensional. So I'm using just the tip of my marker and a very light hand doing some flicking motions. I am adding a little bit more shading in like the center of the petal um, but I'm really not too concerned about that at this point when I go back through the the second round the the darkest back out to the lightest I'll be a little bit more concerned with that then it was so funny because this the coloring is kind of like done in pieces parts because my usually when I'm card making I'm doing it in the middle of the night when my son is sleeping um, because you know I'm I'm momming during the day um, when I'm not working and um, so this time I happened to have four days off. So I was like knocking out a bunch of videos and um, he was awake. So he kept um, just, hey, mom, can you do this? Mom, can you do this? Mom, mom, can you do this? Mom, mom, mommy, mother, mom, mama. Oh my gosh. Um, so like I just kept having to like put the marker down and walk away and then come back. So um, I know a lot of people say that you get better blending if you do um, your Copa coloring while the paper is still wet, um, that the alcohol mixes better. Uh, apparently it works just fine if it's not because this thing was dry as a bone by the time I came back to it. I promise you that. So now I'm out to my darkest color and this is where I am going to be making sure that I add a little bit of that extra shading um, down the center of the petal so they look kind of more cupped. And then I'm going to be um, just working my way back out to the lightest color. When I do my coloring, I use four colors usually, um, especially for large flowers like this. So I have a good transition and the two mid-tones, whatever the two colors in the middle are, is going to be what you see the most of because the darkest color is only for the shadows and the lightest color is only for the highlights. So the two mid-tones are really going to be what is um, the quote-unquote color of my flower. And in this case, it's an R35 and an R29. Um, an R29 is a, a really true um, red color. It's it's my favorite red of the Copics. Um, so I'm leaving just a little bit on the edge that is uncolored, well, unshaded, I should say, because that's what I'm going to go back in with my lightest color with. I left a large portion um, that was lighter on this, the one middle, the, well, the two middle petals, the, the smaller ones, um, because they are up they're up higher than everything else, so they would catch a little bit more light. The other things with Copic is because they are transparent, um, lighter colors will lift darker colors, and that's another thing that's going to help it blend a little bit better. I picked kind of a golden um, color combo for the center of the flower. I'm not going to do this twice because it's so tiny. There's such um, little space to color that the colors will blend pretty nicely without really any help from me. So I just colored that and then left it. I'm going to move on to the other flowers that are in this bouquet, which are called hellebores. And um, they come in all kinds of different colors, which is wonderful. I love flowers that come in all kinds of different colors because then, you know, you can basically color them anything you want. Not that you can't anyway, but if you're going for something that is a little bit more realistic looking, it just gives you a lot more options. I'm coloring these ones white. 
Um, I prefer to use cool grays when I'm coloring items white, but that's just me. You can use toners, neutrals, warm grays, whatever you got going on. And don't be afraid to add in other colors that are not necessarily those in the gray families. I'll show you what I mean at the end. So I started with the C1. It's the same exact technique. Um, I went with the C1 to the C3. I added very minimal C5. I did not even go back in with the C3. I'm blending it out all with the C1. And then what I was talking about, those other colors, I'm actually going to go in with a BB triple zero, um, which is, you know, like a purplish blue to just add a little bit of color. Now, while you're looking at this right now, it's going to look really, really gray, but hang tight because it won't by the time we're done. I use the same yellow combination for the center of the hellebores. And then I'm going in with a white gel pen just to add some detail. There's lots of um, beautiful like stamen that are coming up out of the hellebore. I added little white highlights to each stamen. And then I'm kind of on this kick where I'm adding little white dots to my flowers because I think it's pretty. So I did that too. Uh, you know me, I love a bold black outline. So I'm going to go ahead and outline it before I cut it out. Don't be scared. We are fussing cutting this. Um, there is a die for this particular um, stamp set, um, which is beautiful, but I wanted just the flowers. So I didn't, I don't have a choice but to fussy cut it. I don't mind. Um, I started you know, back in the day before everything had a companion die. So this is like old hat to me. When you're fussy cutting something, I'm right-handed. So I'm keeping my scissors straight up and down in my right hand. I am turning the paper with my left hand. Uh, whichever way you word it, um, work it, not word it. We're not speaking sentences here while we're, okay, whatever. Anyway, whichever way you work it, you want to make sure that you're turning with the hand that's the opposite of the scissors. It'll give you a smoother cut. Speaking of smoother things, another way you can kind of smooth out those edges is by outlining your edges with a um, water-based black marker. If something's really intricate, you saw me there, I don't even hold it up. I actually just place it down and kind of trace it over and it'll catch all the edges. I'm stamping this again for my background and I wanted it to be a little bit more subtle because again, I want those flowers to be what catches your eye. So I am actually stamping this in silver lining ink from W plus nine. So it's just a little bit softer and I'm going to do a green background. Now, if you've been watching my channel, you know I've been on this blue kick, so I'm branching out and kind of proud of myself. So I started with the um, crushed olive, and I'm not taking that all the way down to the corner. I'm taking it pretty far out, all over the entire bouquet. And then I'm gonna add some peeled paint, again, from that top left-hand corner. I'm not completely covering up the crushed olive. I'm just looking to get a good blend so that the top left-hand corner is gonna be the darkest portion of the card. And I'm gonna achieve that with the forest moss. If you don't have a lot of distress inks and you want the same type of gradient, you can still get it. Just start much, light, much lighter handed with the colors and then build up the intensity of your one color as you work back toward the corner picked some uh, the, of the YG90 families and I'm not I'm doing the same kind of shading with the the light flicking motions just the tip of the marker for the leaves but I'm not going to add as much shading or use as many colors as I did for the um, flowers because again highlighting those flowers as I moved toward the the area that had the forest moss I switched from the YG95 over to the YG97 because the 95 you couldn't even see on that dark background so um and then I added shading to the the YG97 leaves the ones in the top left hand corner with a YG99 uh, which is a relatively dark color. These match pretty perfectly to those distress inks that I used, honestly. I wasn't even trying um, to make them match so perfectly. I just wanted something that was similar, and but they're pretty dead on. Um, and then for the leaves that are in a lighter area, um, I started off with the YG95 and then just added a little bit of shading with the YG97. Once that was all done, I felt it looked like a little just plain. So I went in with um, just some clean, clear water and I'm working on W plus nine cardstock, which is not a um, watercolor cardstock, but it is a pretty uh, thick cardstock. So I wasn't concerned about any warping with just the minimal water I was gonna add. And I blotted it up so it wasn't just sitting there pooling. And then I'm gonna add some gold perfect pearls in the background. There's something really, really beautiful about these gold perfect pearls with the um, like the crushed olive, the yellow greens. It just, it looks amazing together. Once everything was dry, I'm gonna go ahead and do my sentiment. This is gonna be a little bit different. So I knew I was stamping over those leaves and I knew I was using a script font. I knew it was probably gonna be hard to read. 
and I was correct. And if I had to do it all over again, honestly, I probably would have picked a thicker sentiment. Um, but this is what I did. So I stamped it first in W plus nine uh, black pure dye ink, but I wanted to make it stand out. So I cleaned off my stamp and this is the joy of the Misty, the stamp positioning tool. I can stamp it in the same exact spot with Versamark. Um, I think that the W plus nine inks you probably could heat embossed with, but you'd have to work really, really quickly. I'm not that fast. So if you stamp over it in the Versamark, you know you're gonna get a good impression. And then the embossing powder that I actually used is a new to me one. It's from Nuvo. And it is called <laughs> Shimmering Pearl. It is a glitter embossing powder, which I thought would be really kind of pretty for the holiday card. I'm all about the glitter, the shimmer. I mean, pretty much all year long, but definitely around holiday time. So then I popped up the flowers that we fussy cut out on some scotch foam tape. Um, so not only are they substantially more detailed in their coloring, they're also popped up off the card. So really just kind of attention getting. And then to accent the sentiment, kind of guide the eye around the card, I laid out some uh, clear droplets from Pretty Pink Posh, but they are, um, they're really just kind of bulky. I really like them, but if I'm not, if I'm going to mail a card, uh, I prefer the morning dew drops. Uh, they dry completely clear. And so it just depends on what your preference is. Um, they look almost exactly the same. So that is the entire card. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me, and then I will catch you on the next video. Bye.